Father, in the name of Jesus, we commit this session to you. We ask that your anointing will take over. The name of the Lord will be glorified. We trust you that the life of God, the glory of God will invade this channel and this medium. We join everyone together into one congregation unto you. In the name of Jesus. No distraction. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Holy Spirit, as you manifest yourself and glorify the name of Jesus as only you can everywhere that men are gathered together unto this word. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh, tonight, like I said, I will be taking some questions and answering them. And then we we'll go to the word. And then every evening, if you have questions, you should share them. I'm trusting God that um, the, the teaching on the end time, I'll be able to get on it, but um, I'm just going to follow the directions in my, in my spirit. And then... Um, the, I've, I've instructed the Igu Media to get all the teachings that are done on the end time the rapture of the saints, the seven churches of the book of Revelations, the vision of Daniel, everything. They are, they are compiling them together and then boosting the thing. Because I did the teaching in 2004, 2005, and then I did some in 2014, 2013, and then Mommy also did some teachings along on the end time. So uh, they are compiling the tapes, but beginning from tomorrow, Mommy will come with um, the teaching on the rapture of the saints for 30 minutes before I come up. So you should get ready for that because I believe that um, this situation in the world is sending two messages, one to the world and one to the church. The message to the church is get rapture ready. Okay, we have, we have seen events unfolding before our eyes now. The rapture can come anytime, but before the rapture comes, there is a mighty move of God that is going to come out of this, thing, this situation. And that's why the, the saints must build up our faith in God. We must develop our faith in the divine. All right, there'll be, there'll be a failure of many things that men are trusting in, in these last days. And it is going to be the Christian that has developed himself in the word of God, in the provisions of God, that will be able to give an answer. In fact, the Bible says many, there are seven women who grab the skirt of a Jewish man and say, let us go with you, we'll take care of ourselves, we just want to bear your name, and all that. That's a picture of the end time. They'll be looking for somebody that is connected to God. Someone that has something to do with God to get to get them out of the confusions that is coming in. And then, so that's, that's that we'll be looking at that. And then also, I want to address this issue of um, conspiracy theories that's been flying around. You find all kind of videotapes that people are, are projecting. And pastors are also picking it. A lot of people have sent those tapes to me and things like that, those videotapes. And, and the first thing I always check about these videotapes about um, 5G and things like that is um, why is this coronavirus taking place in places that there's no 5G? You know? And then um, all, all kind of issues that people bring up. Let me say this to you. I don't believe those conspiracy theories. Is that okay? There are many things that will happen in this last days. All right? The devil is coming. The Antichrist is coming and all that. Yes, we know that. But you must not let the devil blind you to the fact that this there is a real crisis that has come and the message that God is sending to the church so that you don't become careless and open yourself to the devil because you have listened to some um, conspiracy theories somewhere. Yes, there are people that are going to come up that are going to look like the Antichrist. Yes, I know that. I'm, I'm going to be teaching about, all, about the Antichrist and things. If the Lord allows, I'm not giving 100% promise on that, but at least from tomorrow, mommy is going to take 30 minutes of teaching from the Bible studies that have been prepared on the, on the rapture. And then I'll come up and share. But I'll answer questions. So if you have questions, send them from tonight and I will do my best to answer those questions on any subject. Okay, but if, if, it, if it goes along the end time, okay, I'll deal with them too. So, but let, don't, don't, don't focus your mind on these conspiracy theories and all that. Okay, especially the one that is saying that um, there's something 5G that is causing this and things like that. I don't think that thing is sound and that, I don't think that that, 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 that push is, is okay. Somebody even brought um, 
send the, send the, send the tape to me because I refer to the fact that um, the Christian scientists should come up and bring solutions. All right, I'm thinking that is, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not on the same page with those guys. I'm bringing these conspiracy theories. I'm saying that the church will pray in the spirit. Then, we, as we pray in the spirit, the scientists will get an answer in the physical. All right, we must we must recognize our own job. And I was to find a Christian scientist that a Christian scientist that has a born again spirit and anointed spirit and a trained mind is a very powerful tool in the hand of God in these kind of days. I can pick signal in the spirit and go to the lab to to the science center and cut things short. So those are the kind of people I'm called, calling forth. I'm not talking of um, this kind of um, conspiracy, conspiracy theories that people are pushing and all that. Okay, it looks so, um, sometimes it looks look strange. And um, you find some of them are getting abusive at, about pastors and things like that and all, and all kind of things like that. Um, the fact that God has shut down, uh, or God has allowed this, the government has shut down churches and people gathering and all that does not mean God is against the church. Because the church is God's ordination. This is church we are holding now, but God is calling us from the visible to the invisible. And I thank God for what is happening, the challenge, intimacy challenge I gave to you people, even ministers of gospel are picking on it. All right? Develop your, your, your faith now. By the time that this thing is over, you must come out stronger. Because many things are still going to face the world after this one. But you must now be a tool in the hand of the Holy Spirit. Not just the, they're not just those of us that are official ministers. Everybody, by, by the time this coronavirus crisis is over, every Christian must become a missionary on the act for Jesus. Because we will have a short time to evangelize the world and bring people to Christ and lead them onto the path of everlasting life before the devil comes and begin to create the situation that will bring um, the end and the Antichrist on the scene. So we, we, must, we must get your spirit in shape. Praise God. So that, that's something that um, I wanted to say. And then uh, I will be taking the questions now. Okay. Some of the questions have come. And I, I will answer the ones that have already come. So if your questions are coming just now, I will, I, will, I will take them tomorrow. But the ones that have already come, I'll answer them. Sir, I want to ask, how can one do a productive and effective study that is meditation of the word of God I mean, what practical steps can one take as a person, sir? Then what is the art of med meditation? Right, really, the word meditation, as far as the Bible is concerned, is you, there are two things that is involved in meditation. Thinking, fixing your mind on a particular word, truth, and then thinking deeply on it, thinking, running it in your mind, rolling it in your mind. That's the first word. The second word is muttering it back to yourself, speaking it quietly back to yourself. So combine the two, your mouth and your mind working together will produce meditation. Okay? So to deal with practically how you are going to, how you should meditate, you will eventually find your own most comfortable way of meditation. All right? I find it easy to um, meditate, taking the scripture and then um, just thinking about it. What does it mean? Then go to check dictionaries and things like that and then begin to focus fix my mind on it, all right? And then, um, you know, take, for example, I, I was dealing with the word prevail this morning. The word just came up my head, prevail, and I went to check the Bible, okay? And the word of God grew and prevailed, okay? The word of God grew and prevailed. So I was thinking about that. The word of God grew and prevailed. The word of God grew mightily and prevailed. So I began to see the word of God grew mightily and prevailed. So there is a power in the word of God to cause it to grow mightily against anything, and it will prevail over it. You know, there's a, there's a particular phrase that um, some boys use. Um, it may be uh, unbelievers or something. I, I think one boy, one boy was talking to another guy and he said, you know, Timba Yabwe. You understand what I'm saying? Timba Yabwe. And um, you know, that, that phrase is like when the word of God grow, when you begin to build the word of God up against something, you know, it grow, it, it begins to grow mightly. I can't yabo, okay, ni, ni. It just bombard, just bombard like a, like a, like a, like a dam that breaks. If it's sickness, they are building the word of God on. You are meditating upon the word of God. You are sick in your body, but you are meditating on the word of God by the stripes of Jesus. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. I'm healed. You begin to see it. You begin to speak it to yourself. Think about it. You know, the, the devil wants you to fix your mind on the thing, but you fix your mind on the word of God. By the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. If I'm healed, if I'm healed, 20, 20 2,000 years, that means I'm healed now. 
It means this sickness is a lie. You, you begin to discuss with the scriptures like that. That's meditation. At the point, that will just break loose on that sickness and wipe it off. Just like when you begin to take a tablet, medicine, you begin to take it and pay. They give you a course, maybe take three, three times a day for seven days. By the seven day, that's, that medicine will have grown enough in your system to overpower that sickness and bring you, deliver your body from it. The same with the word of God. In fact, we have seen that the word of God is mapping, medicine, concrete. So I, it will just break loose on that thing. So that's, that's meditation. Fixing your mind on it, putting your mouth to it, and talking it back to yourself. You are discussing. The living spirit behind the word of God eventually takes over your discussion and begin to see different things into that word. You begin to imagine it. That meditation includes imagining the word. All right? Seeing pictures of it. Let it paint pictures for you. Many people, is the problem that paints pictures to them. But the word of God should paint pictures to you. And that's, and that's what meditation does. Meditating, thinking about just sitting down, close your eyes. Sometimes I, I close my eyes and just begin with Psalm 23 verse 1. Let me just think that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Just thinking like that. And then begin to speak in tongues. Why still thinking about that? So I speak in tongues quietly. And then the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. What's a shepherd? How does a shepherd re 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 relate with his sheep? I'm a sheep. He's my shepherd. All right? If I'm a shepherd and I have sheep, how will I take care of my sheep? Okay? Is that the way the Lord takes care of me? I begin to imagine that I begin to live within and all. And things begin to expand. So at the time I take my biro, I begin to write and make notes and things like that. So that's, what, that's, that's in, a, in, a, in a short uh, way. That's, a, that's one way to meditate upon the scriptures. All right? As you begin to do that, you will begin to develop your own ways that will suit you more. Okay? Number two question. Um, about the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost baptism and speaking in tongues. I used to have the belief that speaking in tongues should be in a known language as evident in Acts chapter 2 verse 6 because that every man had them speak in his own language. However, coming to 1 Corinthians 14 2, for no man understanding it, I'm confused. I've been born again for years. I prayed for the Holy Ghost baptism and I've been prayed for, but I'm not so sure of receiving him because of my confusion. And I don't want to be wrong. I need clarification and assurance of Holy Ghost baptism. Now, uh, the person that sent this question, I've answered him already privately, but I also told him I was going to do, deal with it publicly because it's a good question that uh, people need to hear. They, they, on, this, on this point, in Acts chapter 2, verse 6, you have heard people say on the social media that most of the people that speak in tongues, especially these people that, that, that attack pastors, that their tongues is just a uh, gibberish. You can't, you, if, you, if you Google it, you can't, if you record it, you can't Google, you Google it, there's no interpretation. And I look at the folly of their ignorance. Sometimes I laugh and, and enjoy, enjoy myself at the expense of their stupidity and ignorance. In Acts chapter 2, Verse 6, this was the first place that the Holy Ghost came down, all right? And they received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and they began to speak. The Bible said many people were gathered. They were, they, there was a purpose of God for doing what he did that time. And then as you move into the epistles, you will now see explanation of the event of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. But the first thing is that everywhere that they received baptism, they spoke in tongues. That one was supposed to follow the with. So anybody that claims he is baptized in the Holy Spirit without speaking in tongues is not having a biblical experience. Yes, they are talking on according to the scriptures. All right. Now, what happened here? And what does what 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 is what what do we mean by speaking in tongues? There are three levels of speaking in tongues that the Bible speaks of. Number one, he Language that you receive when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost. That is the initial evidence that you have received a biblical baptism in the Holy Spirit. You may not speak in tongues if you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, but you should. All right? But if you don't know, you will, you will not yield your tongue. Many people think that if, 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 if the Holy Ghost will make me do it, it won't make you do anything. It is anything making you do it against your will. The Holy Spirit will give you what to say. You will use your tongue to say it out. So the first dimension is the prayer language that comes. That prayer language is what you are reading in 1 Corinthians 14, 2. That says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue 
speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. How be it in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. That is the initial evidence of speaking of the baptism of the Holy And now be, you will develop that initial evidence to become a prayer language. It is what Isaiah 12, Isaiah 28, verse 11, 12 refers to, okay, that with, with stammering tongues, I will speak to these people. Some people, the initial tongue that is just blah, 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 that's all. But then you have to develop it. That's Isaiah 28, 11. For with tamarind leaves and another tongue that we, we speak to this. And the Bible confirmed in the book of 1 Corinthians 14 that that is the speaking in tongues. All right? Just like a baby. When a baby begins to babble, he will eventually develop his mother tongue by listening to people and communicating around. But when he's talking, he just talk ba 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 you know? Maybe if you think of the first word that you spoke as a human being, maybe they tell you ma 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 ba 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 ba, whatever. But now you are speaking, all, some of you have gone to school and you can speak many languages and all that. So the same way you have to develop your prayer language from the stammering tongues that came when you got baptized. That's 1 Corinthians 14.2. Nobody understands the prayer language. It is between you and God. Nobody has another prayer, lang a prayer language like your own. It is unique to you. It is like a hotline between your spirit and God in heaven. Only God understands it. The Holy Spirit that is speaking it through you is using your spirit and your mouth to communicate to your Father in heaven. Your spirit is the one praying with, through that language. Okay? That's the highest kind of prayer you can pray as a human being. Because your brain, there are many things you want to pray about that your brain can't can wrap itself around what you're dealing with. But then you hear to the Holy Spirit. That's prayer language now. All right? The second level of speaking in tongues is the one that you see in Acts chapter 2 that you are reading now, that this, the questioner is reading, okay? This is the one that 1 Corinthians 12, speaking of the manifestation of the Spirit. It talks of nine manifestations of the Spirit. There, the gift of word of wisdom, word of knowledge, the gift of design of Spirit, the gift of, the gift of healings, the gift of working of miracles, the gift of special faith, the gift of prophecy, the gift of diverse kinds of tongues, and the gift of interpretation of tongues. So the gift of diverse kinds of tongues is the second manifestation of speaking in tongues. This one, according to 1 Corinthians 12, is not for everybody. The prayer language, everybody baptized in the Holy Ghost has that. But the second one, everybody baptized in the Holy Ghost don't, don't have the manifestation of the spirit of diverse kinds of tongues. These diverse kinds of tongues, the second level, it can manifest in, 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 a, no, in a language that people that are present will know. But the person speaking it doesn't know. You understand that? That is what makes it a sign. That's what makes it supernatural. The person speaking it doesn't know. It's not a polyglot that has learned so many languages. Okay? I've been, I found myself praying somewhere that somebody came to me and said, do you speak Hebrew? I said, no. He said, well, you are speaking Hebrew. Just, I said, no, I'm just praying in tongues. All right? I've seen people that spoke in tongues fluent in Queen's, Queen's English who didn't go to school. All right? So, but it's a sign to people. There have been places where people were gathered and somebody spoke in tongues in a, in a gathering and nobody understood the language. The person that spoke didn't understand. There was no interpretation. And yet somebody came up and said, I understand what that person was saying. I'm a missionary to a particular tribe. And this language that this person just spoke is language of the tribe where I'm a missionary. That message is for me. So God used a sign to speak to that person through the gift of diverse kinds of tongues. I've had one of my friends share a testimony that went to preach in the north and then Lord led him to preach to an Hausa boy. I said, he doesn't know how to preach. He like, doesn't know how to speak Hausa. But the anointing came on him and he found himself opening his mouth and began to talk to the boy. The boy, the boy was surprised. And he didn't know, he knew when, when the boy closed his eyes that he must have told him, let us pray. And led him to Christ. And suddenly the gift lifted, the manifestation stopped. And the boy continued talking to him. He can't, he can't talk. The boy is dazed. So that's a manifestation of speaking in tongues. That is second level. That's what happened in Acts chapter 2. They had their prayer language and they had the manifestation of the gift of diverse kinds of tongues. So people that were from different places were hearing them speak the glorious works of God in their own tongue. The people that were speaking, they said, don't know what they were saying. The Galileans that were speaking, the disciples. So when somebody say, if you are speaking in tongues, it was something that you know, you don't know it. The person that they pay, if it is a gift of diverse kinds of tongues, it, somebody may know it. That's why I say gifts of diverse kinds of tongues. All right? The third level is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 
if you get if, if you read it from by around verse 28 it talks of the calling level of the gift of the gift of speaking in tongues that's that's one that is very is very very peculiar but many people have, have not seen it they've not experienced that look at verse 28 you see and god has set some in the church first apostles secondly prophet thirdly teachers after that miracles then gifts of healings helps governments diversities of tongues Verse 29 now, huh? if you look at this, do you see, do you see if, are, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? Verse 30, okay? He says, do all speak in tongues? Look at, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret? This is where some people have formed the doctrine that not all, not everybody will speak in tongues. This is talking, you see, you let scripture interpret scripture. From verse 28, he's talking of God has said some in the church. First apostles, secondly prophet, thirdly teachers. He, he's talking of callings. All right? He's not talking of gift of the spirit manifestation. Verse 7 is where he's talking about manifestation. All right? He's talk, no, he's not talking of the speaking in tongues that he had dealt with in, in, in no man understanding. So you see the three levels there. This one is the one where a man, if you if, if, if go back to verse 28 now and verse 29, you see something very beautiful there. Verse 28 and 29. And God has said some in the church, first apostles, secondly prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles and gifts of you know it didn't mention evangelist, but if you do if you combine miracles and gifts of healing, you find the ministry of evangelist there. It didn't mention pastors, but if you combine helps and government, you see pastor there. All right. Then you see diversities of tongues and then interpretation of tongues. Now, if you will look at them, first Corinthians chapter 12, uh, verse um, verse first Corinthians chapter 12. Look at verse, um, okay, First Corinthians chapter 14. Look at verse um, 2. He says, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God, for no man understandeth him. Albeit in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. This is the baptism in the Holy Spirit, initial tongues, and then your prayer language. But he that prophesies, speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, Edified himself. That's your prayer language now. But he that prophesied, edified the church, I would that ye rather that you all speak with tongues, but rather you prophesy. For greater is he that prophesied than he that speaketh with tongues, except interpret. So the Bible is telling us in verse 5 here that tongues plus interpretation will equal prophecy. Do you get that? So if you take this now and bring it to 1 Corinthians chapter. Uh, chapter 12 verse 28 down it means that the person that has that is in the office calling this is talking of office the office of diversities of tongues plus the office of interpreter of tongues the two combined together will get the work of a prophet done so a prophet can stand alone but the pro the prophet the prophetic office just like the evangelistic office you see separated to miracles and healing the pastoral office separated into helps and government. So there are some that it is, there are people that are called to the office of miracles. He doesn't preach, but he can do miracles. He can do healing, but he doesn't preach. But if you are called to be an evangelist, you'll be able to preach. There are people that are called to helps and government, but they don't preach. But if you are called to be a pastor, you'll, be, you'll preach. Do you see that? So now, the person that is called to diversity on tongues is not called to be a prophet, but it's called the diversity of tongues, he will just stand up and bring the message. He don't, may not be able to preach. Then an interpreter, somebody that's called to be and to the other of the interpreter will be there and interpret. The two of them combined together will, be, will, will do what a prophet will have said. But the two of them, now individually, they will preach. But a prophet will also be able to preach while he also flows in that office. That's why the apostle, prophet, evangelist, and pastor, they are the highest offices. All right? So that's, those are the three levels of um, speaking in tongues. That is answering that question. There is a lot to, to, to see on that, but I won't be spending the whole time and the whole night answering that question. And that, that, that's not for now. Now let's go to the third question. Um, because reading the book, Follow the Faith of Abraham, and I saw something that I need understanding or supply answer. In chapter 7, page 120, Daddy explaining what it means to stagger the promise of God from belief showed us that Sarah actually staggered when she suggested Hagar to Abraham. And Abraham took that offer. I don't understand clearly why God, why God said Abraham did not stagger. Okay, Romans 4.20. I have thought about this before reading the book of Hebrews, but didn't come to a concrete conclusion. That's why I need clarification. Is it because above all that happened, Abraham still trusted God's promise? 
that God said is staggered not, or no, or could it be that the scripture was referring to a steady belief, even though he fell and doubted at some times? Does it mean if I at any time have issues believing God's promises, God doesn't consider it rightly as unbelief, or is it all about the heart? Now, when the Bible says Abraham, uh, let's just go to that Romans chapter 4 because I, I need to get um, to get that scripture for you. Romans chapter 4. Um, Romans chapter 4, verse um, 20. Okay. And look at it from verse um, 17. As it is written, I've made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God who quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were, who against who believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform. All right. Now you see the, the, the scriptures here is just giving you the conclusion of the journey of Abraham's faith. If you read the book of Hebrews 11, I think verse 11, the Bible says, Sarah also has said, received strength to conceive and was delivered of a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful, who had promised. That didn't tell you all the details of the nitty gritty of what they went through in the home. When she laughed and said, at this age, am I still going to have this pleasure? So when you, when the, what, what the Bible, what, what, what you must deal with is that when you are acting in faith, there is a difference between your head and your heart. There may be doubt in your head that you are questioned. The question, the devil is attacking your mind, but your heart is holding firmly to what God has said. Okay? If, if, if they were in the New Testament, I'm sure the Holy Ghost will have given steps and guidance to them, uh, and I'm sure the issue of Ishmael and Agar will not have come in. But that is that they were not in the New Testament. And that's why their faith is so special. A person that is not born again, that didn't have the baptism in the Holy Spirit, that could walk through all the darkness and shadow like that. 100 years old, the wife is 90. All right? And still held on to what God has said. Okay? He's, he's rapid, trying to wrap his head around, around it. That God, you said this. Are you sure? And all that. That is, that is asking questions like that does not mean he's doubting God. Okay? And when those questions come, he, he grew strong in faith by giving glory to God. The questions will come. The, the Bible call it battle of faith. You're going to have to fight battles of faith. And when the battles of faith come, you lift up the standard of prayer. I mean, praise. There are people that is standing on, 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 on the word of God for his healing and the pain is racking his body. Do you go with the pain or you begin to praise God and praise God? Sometimes you praise yourself to sleep. You have done all that you know to do. You are not dropping the word of God, but you don't know. You, you just depend. The devil is like every demon here has your address. But at that time, just lift your hands and begin to praise God. Give glory to God. The Bible says, grew strong in faith, giving glory to God. All right? So they staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Through unbelief, refusing to act according to the word of God or looking at the contradictory evidences. Okay? He still chose to believe. He didn't understand it, but he made the choice. So it's not as if um, he's, he's staggered in the sense of um, he's going to drop the word of God. Is that okay? Sarah, Sarah, Sarah came to a conclusion. Maybe, maybe it's not as if. Maybe, it's, maybe, maybe God said we have a child. But it doesn't have to come through me. That's where the, key, the question of staggering on Sarah's part comes. To. But Sarah bounced back and judged God faithful. That if, if this can happen, then I can have a baby also. All right? At what point between the time that Sarah, Sarah told Abraham to sleep with Agar and Sarah made, the, made up her mind to believe God also. That's when the Bible says she judged God faithful who had promised that he able to do what Abraham did himself. All right? Both of them were dead. Their bodies were dead. But now Abraham, Abraham, Abraham's faith, you see that Abraham's faith was steady. He could impregnate the house girl and that must have affected Sarah somewhere. If if Abraham, if Abraham can get the house, the house get pregnant, well, I can also get pregnant. God can do it. All right? So she judged God faithful and then got through to that. Praise God. Okay? 
And then let's go to the next question now. Um, all right. Thank you for your commitment to entering the world every season. That in your teaching, title three phases of second coming, what that was preached in Apostolic Foundation series, you explained that the coming of the Allos Paracletos, Holy Spirit, as I learned in John 14, was the first coming of Jesus Christ when we are where we are with his second coming. What about the first coming of Jesus to the world? Is the first coming of Jesus as prophesied in the scripture, not the first coming? Thank you. Now, <laughs> let's go to John chapter 14. I wanted to read it from verse 1 because um, the three phases of the second coming, people have been asking questions. Yeah. The, so the, 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 the question is, I was talking of the three phases of the second coming. It had nothing to do with the first coming. So maybe you maybe you got the two confused. I didn't say the three phases of the first coming. The three phases of the second coming. All right? Verse 1 says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Verse 2 now, he says, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Okay? And verse 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. That's the that's promise. I will come again. Now that coming... That coming again is in phases. The first one is he came back in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. He has come back in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is in us. He is with us. All right. So we have the presence of Jesus in us. The Holy Spirit brings us into that, that experience, walking in that. Number two, the second phase is the rapture. That's one that we're waiting for. The second phase, the first phase, is not everybody in the world, it's only born again people that open themselves to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The second one is the rapture. It is the Holy Spirit in the believer that we sensitize him to the rapture. So a, a born again person that is not baptized in the Holy Ghost, that is not in communion with the Holy Ghost in these last days, will find it difficult to live ready, rapture ready, to be, to be sensitized to the events and in the Spirit, to the coming of the Lord. Okay? This, the rapture is going to be a secret coming for his bride okay people wonder will the church go through the great tribulation now the church will go through tribulation but not the great tribulation all right it's coming for his bride okay you won't be coming for your bride when you allow your bride to have been wounded in an accident all right and the, the principle of god is that the righteous don't suffer judgment with the wicked so god is going to take the righteous church out of the world before the judgment be the world that's the second coming in the rapture, the second phase of the coming. The third phase is the second advent, when it will visibly appear to the whole world and stand on Mount Olives, and Mount Olives will cleave into two in Israel. All right? That's the second coming. In the first coming, first phase of the coming is just come into the believer in the Holy Spirit, empower us to live and represent him, do ministry and fill our purpose on the earth. The second phase is in the rapture. The Holy Ghost that is not will get us ready for the rapture. Sensitize us. The Bible says the, the mystery of iniquity is at work already, but only he that let it will let until he's taken out of the way. That's the Holy Spirit. Okay, in the church. And when the one is taken out of the way, and then that wicked man shall be revealed. Okay. When the when the rapture takes place, then the, 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 the stage is set for the Antichrist to manifest. And it's, it's, I, I did it, I did this teaching 14 weeks. There's no way I'm going to be able to do to cover that in this in this um, remaining days. But 14 weeks of teaching, you can get it at a discounted rate. I'm sure they, 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 will, they will make it available for you. But I hope that they will be able to boost that. Because 24, I was looking at the teaching. I looked very young that time. I looked, <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> and then it was at MDS. But now, I'll, I'll, see, I'll, I'll see what I can do. But the third, the third phase of it is when he will now come with his bride for the nation of Israel. And that is the second advent. Everybody in the world will see him that time. In the rapture, not everybody will see, only the ready, the, those that are living rapture ready, we see, see and hear the call and then disappear. They're just like people are watching all over the world now, the, the coronavirus is happening, and this is the world, they are, they are putting records here. If they want what then 10, 10 in 10, 10, 10, 10 tested positive, this one tested here. And all, all, the, all the news in the world, they are just global, everybody's looking. That's how it's going to be. They're going to be disturbed. Discuss person that then two, two people have disappeared here, one person has disappeared here, this person disappeared, and things like that. And they say, what? Well, this is true. Okay? So my, my challenge to you again is make sure you have moved into rapture ready living now. I believe that this is the message that this virus has come to send to the church, to the world. is a warning turn now, otherwise something more terrible is coming on this world. 
when the mercy of God will not be available. Now mercy is available. All right, we must get out and begin to connect our people, family members, everybody you love, everybody you don't want to miss rapture, connect them to Christ now. All right? But you as a believer, get into rapture ready living now. Make sure there's nothing in your life, nothing you are doing that can keep you from making rapture. Is that okay? So that's the, that's, that's, that's in that question, the three phases of the second coming. It's not talking of the first coming. The first coming is different from second coming. Okay? Um, the next question, coming online for me is a great challenge than ever before. Now, I don't mean financial, but there have been too many distractions and mental harassment for me time I come online. I don't know how nude, I don't know, but nude pictures of all kinds just popping up on my phone before. I could spend two minutes online, even when services are on. And it's even difficult to give someone my phone when data is on need because it will be difficult to explain such to anyone. So what can I do in such situation to stop this mess before it graduates to something else? I think you must have visited a site that asks these kind of things on it and something must have invaded your phone. So you deal with that. Either you turn your, I, 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 I think I've seen this question before and I told the IT team to help you. First, you submit yourself to your pass. If you have, been, if you have doubled in this kind of a thing, then deal with it. Otherwise, your mind will be, will, be, will be affected. But if you have not, it means something has, somebody has hacked your phone and the IT team will tell you what to do to reset and go back to practice it and start all over again. You can't, it's, not, it's not possible that you can't recover your phone again. So they will tell you what to do, okay? Uh, this one says, I was asked when teaching believers class on the study of the rapture that when, where do those that die in Christ go after they die? Okay, I have always believed that when people die in Christ, they really go to heaven. But reading the scripture in 1st 4, 13 to 17, I'm not sure my belief is right. From this scripture, when I see, what I see is that the dead in Christ will rise first when Christ will turn. If the English, in, when the scripture is read in plain English, uh, it appears the dead in Christ remain asleep, dead, I believe, until when they will rise to meet the Lord in the air. If not, where will they be rising from to meet up the Lord in the air? Some people have said this scripture is symbolic and that after death is judgment, but they have not been able to give me a logical biblical explanation. Uh, please add any intervention on the correct interpretation of this scripture. Now, the, two, the, the, the point is this, that um, the righteous dead in the Bible are in two categories. The Old Testament sin that died, before Jesus came, and then the righteous dead after Jesus has come. Now, the Old Testament said that died before Jesus came. The Bible gave a picture. You remember the story of Lazarus that died and went to Abraham's bosom. That place where all the righteous dead dwell in is called Abraham's bosom. At that time, before Jesus died, Abraham's bosom was not in heaven. They called paradise was not in heaven. It was under the earth. But a separate gulf, a gulf, a, an impassable gulf was existing between that place and hell. That was what Lazarus said to the rich man. The rich man is in hell, tormented. He saw Lazarus in Abraham's bosom and said, please come and dip your finger in water and top. He said, there's a, an impassable God between the two of us here. So, but when Jesus died, after he rose from, after he de de defeated the devil and collected the keys of hell, hell, hell and death from him, the Bible says he went to preach to the prisoners, to the spirits in prison. Mm -hmm. And he led captivity captive. The captive that led captivity, are the, these are the people that have been there. You remember when Val says, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be lifted up and let the, the king of glory shall come in. That's David that is the most likely raising that, that voice there. That he has come. All the ones that they have prophesied, they have been seen before. This is him. He has come. To, so from that point on, he moved paradise from under the earth now to the presence of, of God. Are you following what I'm saying? That, that dealt with the righteous dead before he came. They now have received the gospel. They, 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 the Bible talk of preaching the gospel to the, to, to, the, to the spirits in prison. They are not in prison of um, sin, but they couldn't go to heaven because the blood had not been shed. But that blood had been shed, and now they have moved. Okay? But now, the righteous dead in Christ now, as soon as you die, in, a person dies in Christ, he goes to the presence of God immediately. Paul said in the book of... Um, 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 Paul, Paul, Paul writing the book of First Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter five. Look at Second Corinthians chapter five. He says, and and in Philippians also, Second Corinthians chapter five. Let me let me let me let me give you that scripture. Second Corinthians chapter five. Okay. Um. Look at verse. Um, Six, therefore, we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Do you see that? 
So when a believer is absent from the body, that is death now, he's present with the Lord. So there's no interregnum, there's no, there's, no, there's no gap anymore. Is that okay? And of course, he also talks in Philippians, in the, in the, in the, in the book of Philippians chapter 1. Okay? Philippians 1, if you look at them, verse... Um, verse... Um, Philippians chapter 1. Now, this is... Um, Philippians 1, I'm looking for where it says for, for, for me to live is Christ. Yeah, Philippians 1. Yeah, Philippians 1, verse 21. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I what not. For I am in a strait between two, having a, dis a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. You see that? So when a believer departs, is to be is with Christ now. So the question that is actually giving you challenge is when Paul said, those that die in Christ, they, those that are with, with, with that are alive at the coming of Christ, we will not precede those ones that die. What happens is that they are, once, once you are you've been with the Lord, the body is buried here, all right? But the spirit is in the presence of the Father. But now when Jesus is coming back, when the trumpet sound, the spirits of all the born again dead that are in the presence of the Father will first of all go back to join their body. And the body will be regenerated to be a new body, like the body of Jesus Christ. The, the body that we have now is flesh and blood. Now, the body that Jesus has now is flesh and bones. Our body will be like his own. Philippians 3.21, I think he's talking about that kind of a body. Okay? So that's what happens that the, the righteous dead in Christ now, everybody will now come join their body. In that day, it's going to be very serious. Because you see building explode, explode. That they have used the body of people to do sand and, and make building. The building just explodes. Crap, 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 because bodies will be joining their spirit. And then, those of us that we are alive, still in the body, the body will change and the body will be able to fly. And then we'll go. So you get that. So that's, that's, that's what that's what that um, is talking about, okay? Uh, that's... Um, okay. I hope... Um, this is... Um, let me see. Okay, let, let me see two other questions and then I'll close this one. Okay, the, this this question says, "Daddy, I'm grateful for 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 to God for you for this ongoing that this was this a really more challenge and refreshing to my spirit, as it has resuscitated my study life. I have begun to go back to books of the ministry I bought in the past and I've not read or read halfway. Thank you, Daddy. This is my question. So, when as a believer you are believing God in prayer over a matter, and as you have taught us, we should look to God for a word of God that we can base our prayer of faith on, sir." What do you do when several scriptures is coming to your mind while praying over the matter? As in, how will you know which of those scriptures coming to your mind at that time is the Rema word for the matter? In fact, let me say, don't, don't, don't be waiting for scriptures to come to your mind. Go to the Bible, get a concordance, and search for scriptures that will help that, that talk about that matter. If you are believing God for healing, go and search all the scripture promise on healing. You don't need to say this is Rema word, just the Bible. It's like when you are praying, you are praying on covenant, not on prophecy. Covenant is the like a, like the constitution. If a lawyer is going to the court, he's not just waiting for 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 things that come to his mind. He goes to the constitution, to the law, and marshal points that is going to plead his case before the judge. The same way, when you are praying, you find the scriptures that guarantee and promise you those things. If it is not in the Bible, you can't pray it. If it's not in the Bible, God does not confirm it. All right, it's either it's in the Bible or God the Holy Ghost spoke it to you. But the way you are framing this question, you are thinking more of Rema word. It is the written word that you are going for. So if you are, the many, the more scriptures you find, the, the greater the ground you have to get an answer. Once you have the scripture, that's when, that, when the devil comes to tell you, how do you know you have it? You quote the scripture to him. The scripture is your ticket. The scripture is your, is, is, is the, is your, is your receipt. You know, that you are waiting for the delivery now. You have made a payment. You, for example, some of, some of, some of you, when, when you are coming for a program, you, you pay online, you have a, a receipt generated online with a, a number given you. When you come to the victim and they say, what's the evidence that you are paid? You bring the evidence. Your confidence is on the evidence. The scripture is your evidence, not on your feeling. When you say, how do you know you are healed? I felt better. That is dangerous. 
When you say, how do you know you are healed? You show the evidence according to First Peter 2, 24, according to this, according to, how do you know that God is going to, to, to help you? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You find scriptures that, that promise it. If the scripture you are quoting does not promise that, you are, you are, you are standing on shaky ground. Though. So you must always find scripture that promise you something that is, that is, that is like what you are believing God for. Is that okay? Praise God. Um, the, the last question now. My first question is, where are those who died as believers now? Of course, I've answered that one now. Okay? Bible said the dead in Christ rise first. If they are going to rise from the grave, will their bodies move from paradise to grave? Well, I've already answered this one, so this one should not be... Uh, will, will tribulation time post-date rapture? After rapture, when is the marriage feast of the Lamb going to take place? <laughs> During tribulation, who are the saints of tribulation the Bible talked about? Okay, so this question, I will reserve it to... Um, because I've already, I've already, I've already, I, I, I don't want to just mention it. Really. I will do the teaching over time, over and over this next week. Okay. The first one I've answered. The second one, the tribulation, the, the rapture will predate the great tribulation. There is tribulation, there is great tribulation. Tribulation is what the church will pass through. The church is not going to face the Antichrist physically. We will deal with the spirit of the Antichrist, the mystery of iniquity. But the iniquity is will manifest visibly for other, anybody that means rapture. Is that okay? The great tribulation is described by Bible as the time of Jacob's trouble. It is designed to turn the nation of Israel back to their God. It's not designed for the church. The church will pass through the tribulation. Jesus said in John, it's in John six, John six or so, that um, in the in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good, you have overcome. All right. The tribulation that the church is going to face is not the great tribulation. The great tribulation is judgment. The tribulation that the, the church is going to face is, is opposition, attack of the enemy and things like that. All right? But in the midst of it, the power of the Holy Ghost is available. All right? But anybody that misses the rapture, they will use their own blood to, to purchase their salvation. Any, let everybody get ready now. The blood of Jesus is what is making salvation. But if anybody misses the rapture, if he's not going to accept the mark of the Antichrist, he will die and through, his, will be through great torture, he may make it. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not planning for that for myself or anybody. So I don't want anybody to wait for that time. So that is what the, the answer to your question. The, the great tribulation is different from the tribulation that the church is passing through. The rapture will come before the great tribulation. Is that okay? After the rapture, where is the marriage feast of life? The marriage is going to take place in heaven. It's not going to take place on the earth. It is at the marriage feast that the, the reward of the saints will be given. Bible says we will all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, okay, to give account of what we have done in the body. So all the things that we are doing, and that's when the crowns will be given to everybody that has the soul winner's crown, the pastor's crown, different kind of crowns. We are going to collect that at that time. After the rapture, seven years feast. We're going to be doing different things, okay? And it is from that feast, now the tail end of the seven years, you understand? At the, at, the, at the tail end, the, I mean, the, the, at the tail end of the of the of the of the of the marriage of the marriage supper, that the the the, the Lord will come back. The Lord will come back now. I'm not the, the feast not seven years. So don't 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 let me don't let me don't let me don't let me, don't let me, don't, 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 let, don't let that confuse you. The marriage the marriage supper is going to take place after the rapture. Seven years is what the world has. All right. In the midst of the seven years, the Antichrist will declare himself to be God. There is going to be pandemonium on the earth. Okay, the war of Armageddon is going to take place. The church is the, 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 the Lord is going to return back to end the war of Armageddon with the church coming with him. The, those that made those of us that have gone with him in the rapture. Okay, praise God. Of course, during the tribulation, who are the saints of the tribulation? Those that miss the rapture. Okay, there will be people that miss the rapture that they wake up after the rapture. Wow, I've been careless. They will, not, they will not accept the mark of the beast. They will be punished from pillar to post from this. You look at this coronavirus situation now. It's giving us a prelude that something can happen. You know, people have been wondering what can happen that the whole world will agree to do, to go in one direction. Are you following what I'm saying? People are talking of um, uh, vaccination and things like that and all that. Yes, you, the vaccine, vaccine is the way to solve, to deal with problems like this and all that. But the truth of the matter is this. Can you imagine that a situation will come that everything church will shut down? You know, only God knows how, how this matter is going to end and what legislation that is going to come that is going to be the acceptable legislation for everybody in the world. 
It went when Bible said people accept the mark of the Antichrist and don't have it, you won't be able to buy, you won't be able to sell, you won't be able to do that. It's not as if it is going to be something that is going to be forced down the throat of people. There will be an event that is happening on the other. That will be the most logical outcome. Everybody will accept. Anybody that don't, doesn't accept will be an enemy of the state. So you get what I'm saying? So that's, that's I, I, I just gave, gave the answer in summary. I will be doing the teaching later in the week and next week. All right? So that, that answers all the questions. I'm sure you have been blessed by that. Okay? But you know, tonight, there's something that I want to share with you that's very interesting. I was reading um, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27. Let me put it on the screen for me. Ephesians chapter 5, and look at verse 27. Uh, look at verse 26. Read it from verse 26. Ephesians 5, 26. And I want you to take note of this. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. This is talking of the word of God. So something happened, I was just washing my hand this afternoon, and it, it dawned on me that if soap can destroy the virus from the physical end, then the washing of, the, of, of, of water by the word will destroy that thing spiritually. I mean, science tells us that washing ordinary soap, any, any decent soap will deal with the virus physically. Has no defense against soap. And it does not mean that washing my hand with soap. And that phrase just came, washing of water by the word of God will destroy anything and every, every weapon of that virus spiritually. Did you get that? So I want you to take note of that word. As you begin to wash yourself with the word of God, speak the word of God over yourself before you go to bed. Speak the word of God over yourself before you go to work. Wash yourself with the water of the word. It will disarm and destroy every weapon of that virus in the spirit. If washing a hand by soap destroy that virus from what scientists have told us. It just dawned on me today. So I want to give you some scriptures. Okay? Today. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'll give you scriptures now that I want you to take over yourself. Healing scriptures. Washing yourself with the water of the word. It will destroy every sickness in the spirit. So they do what they do. They won't have any hold on you physically. Just, just, if, just see yourself, I'm washing my spirit with the water of the word. That word is the divine soap. All right? I'm washing my children with the water of the word. I'm washing my head. I'm washing my heart. I'm washing my blood with the water of the word. I'm washing my kidney. I'm washing my lungs with the water of the word. I'm washing my mind with the water of the word. So let me just give you those scriptures and let it wash over your spirit. Okay? Look at third John 1 to beloved. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thou so prosper. First John 5, 14 and 15. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And because we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. In Hebrews 12, verse 12 and 13. Wherefore lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight path for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Philippians 2 13, for it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Romans 8 32, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for you, how shall he not with him also freely give you all things? James 1 17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Can you imagine that? A part, good health, sound health, protection, preservation is perfect gift. And coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Romans 8 31, if God be for us, who can be against us? Say, because God is for me, because nothing God can be successfully me. against me. Malachi 3 6, for I am the Lord, I change not. Look at Isaiah 41 10, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, here I will help thee. Here I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. I'm just giving you these scriptures. 
15, and the Lord will take away from thee all sickness. Remember yesterday I showed you, the Lord will turn off all sickness from thee. He will turn off all sickness from thee and will permit none of the evil diseases of the world, which you know, to come upon you. All right? Exodus 15, 26, say, if thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, let me read like this, because you are diligently hearkening to the voice of the Lord your God, and you do that which is right in his sight, and give ear to his commandment, and keep all his statutes, the Lord will permit none of these diseases upon you, which he has permitted on the world. For he is the Lord that he led his, Jehovah Rapha is the Lord that Rapha you. They say, Jeremiah 30, 30 verse 17, for I will restore Aruka to you, I will restore health, I will restore you to soundness, and I will heal you of thy wounds, I will Rapha you of your wounds, heal you by mending you and teaching you. All right? Verse Jeremiah 36, 36, he said, Behold, I will bring it Aruka, I'll bring it health, and Mape, medicine, remedy, and I will cure them, I will rapture them, and I will reveal unto them the abundance of peace. Peace is shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing stolen, nothing damaged, nothing spoiled, and truth. I will give, I will reveal unto you the abundance of nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing stolen, nothing damaged. Praise God. That's a, that's a passage that I want that, that I'm reading over you, washing of water with the word. Look at these scriptures I want to read over you now. All right? Fear not. I'm just reading a list of scriptures that talk of fear. I mean, that, that, that tell you fear not. Genesis 15 1. After this, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield and your very great reward. Do not be afraid, child of God. Okay? That's what look at what the Bible says. After this word of the Lord came unto Abraham in the vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham. I am thy shield and thy great word. Genesis 21, verse 17. God had the boy crying. And the angel of God called to Eger from heaven and said unto her, What is the matter, Eger? Okay. What he led Eger? Fear not, for God has heard the cry of the baby. Okay. Fear not. Don't be afraid, for God has heard the voice of blood where he is. Genesis 26 and 24. I'm just washing you with the water of the word. Okay? If the washing of, of the hand by soap will destroy coronavirus, that is scientific. Okay? Washing yourself with the water of the word will destroy every spiritual thing that is negative. It will destroy it. Genesis 26, 24. And the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham thy father, Fear not, for I am with thee, and will bless thee, and multiply thy seed for my servant's sake. That's your, that's your word. All right? Genesis 35, 17. Genesis 35, 17. Look at it. And it came to pass, when she was in hard labor, that the midwife said unto her, Fear not, thou shalt have this son also. Fear not, thou shalt have this son also. Okay? Genesis 43, 23. And he said, peace be unto you, fear not. Your God and the God of your father has given you treasure in your sacks. I had your money and he brought Simeon out unto them. Okay? Wonderful. Exodus 14, 13. Exodus 14, 13. This is Moses speaking to people. And Moses said unto the people, fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. Amen. All right? Oh, wonderful. Look at Leviticus 26.6. Leviticus 26.6. Leviticus 26.6 says, And I will give peace in the land, and ye shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. Amen. And I speak that over every one of you that you are so, that they have been attacked by insomnia, you have been having sleepless night, and you shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. Amen. And I will lead evil beasts out of the land, Amen. neither shall the sword grow through your land. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Look at Numbers 6, 24 to 26. Numbers 6, 24 to 26. Okay? Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 to 26. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. Amen. Okay, verse 25. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Verse 26. Mm. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. Oh, let me read it again. The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. The Lord make his face to shine upon you Amen. and be gracious unto you. 
the Lord Amen. lift up his countenance upon you and Amen. give you peace. Amen. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. Amen. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious upon thee Amen. unto thee. The Lord, the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Look at Amen. the next, next line after that. This is very interesting. Okay. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. That is how God told the priest to bless the children of Israel. Now give me that verse from verse 24 again. I want, to, I want to close tonight with this scripture and put that, put the name of the Lord upon you. Okay? The Lord bless thee Amen. and keep thee. Amen. The word keep is God. All right? The Lord God, the Lord the keeper, the Lord your God, the Lord your, your watch, the one that keepeth thee neither sleep nor slumber. The Lord bless thee Amen. and keep thee. Amen. To bless means to empower you to triumph Amen. against all opposition. Blessed people don't struggle. Bless, bless people don't survive. They triumph. Bless people. You have the Lord bless thee and keep them. I want to lift your two hands and when I finish declaring this, lay it on your head. Before you, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give you peace. The Lord give you shalom tonight. The Lord give you the power and the force of shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing stolen, nothing damaged, nothing spoiled, nothing decay. The Lord give you peace in the spirit, in the soul, in the body, in your marriage, in your finances, in your relationship. The Lord bless thee and give you peace. And the Bible says, when, 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 when the priest blessed like that, they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I bless I put the name of the Lord upon you. And the Lord bless you. Amen. Let me repeat it one more time from verse 27, 24. And the Lord bless thee Amen. and keep thee. Amen. Oh, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. Amen. In these days, the Lord bless you and keep you night and day. Amen. The Lord make his face to shine upon you Amen. and be gracious unto thee. Amen. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee Amen. and give thee peace. Amen. And I put the name of Jehovah upon you. Amen. I put the name of Jehovah upon Amen. you. And the Lord bless you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Lay those, lay those hands upon your head and pray in the Holy Ghost for five minutes. And let the name of the Lord be upon everything that is yours, spirit, soul, and body. Zebalide, ye de soli brama yasanda, ite de masi ye de le brum ste de sedalu braya, e ramayado, mosi de ye de ye de ye de, e de de ye salabamayado, e da malama si de bade matito yosto musunda ya. Ruba Aribra Masundo. Oh, I wash you with the water of the word today. Washing with the water of the word. Washing with the water of the word. Washing you 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 with the water of the word. Cleansing you and sanctifying you. Cleansing you and sanctifying you. That you'll be without spot, without wrinkle, without any such thing. In the name of Jesus, destroying every hold of the enemy in the spirit. Any sickness, any attack. This coronavirus washing with ordinary soap and water destroys it. Washing your spirit, washing you in the spirit with the water of God, destroying the spiritual substance of that demon, of that, of that attack in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. You are washed, you are sanctified. You are cleansed in the name of Jesus. The Lord give you peace. 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 The Lord give you strength and bless you. In Jesus' name. So every day when you go out, take the word of God and wash. Before you sleep, wash yourself. See yourself just as you wash your hands in these days and know that that is part of what the scientists tell you to do. It, it destroys the virus. Put the word of God upon yourself. Wash your head with the word of God. Wash your eyes with the word of God. Wash your ears with the word of God. Wash your heart with the word of God. Take guest scriptures and, and how do you wash? You, you wash with your mouth. As you speak it, it is washing you. It is washing. It is washing. And that word contains the, the substance to destroy the virus, to destroy the disease, to destroy the demonic power, to destroy strongholds, to destroy all kind of causes. A cost can, can be, when, when, it costs, when, when you bring the word of God upon a cost, it destroys this, the defense of the cost and, and wash it away. Oh, Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. I'm sure you're blessed tonight. It is well with you in Jesus' name. 